Unsyndicated presents Off the Board, the weekly gambling show. Hosted by Blake Majerzak and Mike Iveson. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just going to preface this right off the top. We are recording this while the Tigers are playing before Shep and Sean go live, but you're going to see this after Shep and Sean were live. So it's a little confusing, but we didn't want to start the show at like 9 30, 10 o'clock. Mike has a big boy job, so he has to get up <laughs> early in the morning. And Friday was kind of a mess for both of us. So here we are, you know, trying to pay attention to the Tigers game and our bets and everything. Uh, there's a lot going on here, but we're going to roll through it. Mike, I'm news. so happy to see you. Absolutely. You too, brother. We, we've been, we've been texting like madmen with all these bets going on and I what am... do we have here. Get out. We got a tie ball game. <laughs> yeah. You are delayed from me. By the way. <laughs> I don't, I'm like eight seconds behind. I didn't say anything though. Did I? That is beautiful. You played that, you played that good, but here's the good thing about us being taped. Our bets are still good and the money's still green. So yes. it's all okay. good. Everybody. Just a disclaimer, line subject to change. Yes. There we go. We're, there, so there we're clear. And um, hey, real quick, Blake, I, I know we do this all week. Have you know lines have been all over the place this week? Yes. I, I don't know what's yes. up, but I have I have missed more lines this week than I ever have. And not by like a half point or a point, by, by like two points. Like these things are all over. It's madness. Uh, especially in college, I just wonder if it's partially because of the madness that happened last weekend. Because last weekend was insane. We talked about it not being a great slate. And then, like we talked about on the show, those are the weeks where upsets happen and craziness happens. This weekend slate and next weekend slate of college football are absolutely incredible. And I'm super excited to talk about those games. Yeah. But also, I just because we're here, I had to bring this up real quick. I'm on a hot streak on parlays right now. You I've hit three parlays yeah. this week. I hit one on the Tigers game Monday. I hit one in the Kansas City game Monday. And then I hit one yesterday on the Tigers game. And I, I've got to tell you, Blake, they're. I'm not a, a phone guy. I don't like to talk on the phone. Even like answering text messages or get text messages bother me. I love text messages from my wife. But right behind that is your parlay text messages when they hit. I get so happy for you. That is just awesome. And you have been on fire. I don't know what happened. I It came out of nowhere. It makes up for how bad I was over the weekend. So okay. we're, we're about even probably. There you but, go. Hey. We're going to take it. Hey, it th- th- leads to a, just a short story here. Uh, one of the ladies I, I work with, her husband, uh, two weeks ago, hit a seven-team parlay, 200 bucks. He won $22,000. Oh you know, her, her response was, did you really win or are you even now? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly where we're at. Exactly. It was unbelievable. All right, let's get into these last yeah. week games. We can yeah. we can roll through these real quick. Um, rough week for me on college, Mike. You you're, you know, for the guy that doesn't uh, bet a lot of college, you're you're absolutely crushing these picks, and your oh. numbers are working for you. That is for sure. Oh, absolutely. So, something's definitely working. Like even not only on show bets, but on the bets that I actually take. Uh, my NCAA bets are crushing my my NFL picks, and this is the first time ever. I mean, ever. And my NFL bets have been much better than my college football bets. So yeah, we're so, just living yeah. in the upside down, apparently. Bizarro world. Bizarro world. Um, just real quick, the the one game that I wanted to focus on from last week that pissed me off more than anything was that Oregon Michigan State game because Coach Smith kicking that field goal. And then declining the penalty. Yes. Declining the penalty. Didn't kick the onside. Nothing afterwards. He was specifically playing for the cover. You cannot tell me otherwise. You can't change my mind. He was playing to cover that spread of 23 and a half. 
And I was very upset about that because that game was 31 nothing. I was like, oh, this is a winner. No problem. Yep. And then Oregon just let off the gas. They took out all their starters. And that was that. Yeah, you I think we were talking before the show. We're, we're going to see more and more of this. And we have already seen more and more of this that they are playing to to those lines, whether they'll, they'll never admit it, obviously, but mm-hmm. they are doing it because as soon as someone admits it, the investigation is going to be ridiculous. But they know what those lines are and they're going to cover that line because let's let's admit it. He knows Sparty's took Sparty. So yeah. he knows who he's covering for, not specifically a buddy or himself, but he just covered for Sparty Nation. And uh, I know we said I, we were only going to talk about one of these th- things. The other thing, I live bet the Ohio State-Iowa over at halftime. Ooh. It was only 28. Yeah. So that was I was very happy with that. I just knew that that, that pace and everything wasn't going to stay, and Ohio State was going to start putting up some points. So that was a good... That was a good live play for me. Was there any college games that stuck out to you? I know you didn't stay up and watch Miami Cal, but that was insane. No, I did not, and I'm mad that I didn't uh, because because of the comeback and everything. But I watched the Iowa-Ohio State game uh, with a buddy from Iowa, so it, it was kind of entertaining. And I knew it was coming apart because he predicted exactly what was going to happen, and that's what happened. You could see it creeping in right before halftime. And then that start of the uh, second half, we just turned it off. And that, of course, everyone's watching. And we did the same thing, Vandy, Alabama. Yeah. yeah. That was, that, that game was that, insane. That, that is, that was crazy. But, Blake, you got to love stuff like that because that just puts that bet this week right on a tee for you, right? Come yeah. on, Kentucky. I know someone's going to have it in their pocket. <laughs> yeah. I, that's a stay away spot for me because that is the ultimate letdown spot. Oh, for yeah. Vandy. I'm, and I think they're getting like 13 and a half this week, something like I that. I got it at 13. I, I'm laying the 13 with Kentucky at Kentucky. I'm all over a letdown spot. The but Kentucky, were- with how their season's been, like, it's yeah. just they're so inconsistent. I'm like, I just can't. I can't do yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Um, NFL, if, uh, Todd, you want to pull that up real quick, we can roll through this one even quicker. Uh yeah, I mean it was a, I had a good week. Mike, you like okay, we were both on the right side. I feel like we were on the right side of the Bengals. Absolutely. If I could play a recording of the argument I had uh with a buddy at work, he was so mad at me that I did not buy the two and a half up to the three in the Jets game. And I said, and and in the Cincinnati game. Mm-hmm. It was the Cincinnati game, not the Jets game. He yeah. he actually at one point worked for the Jets. That's why I was thinking that but for the Cincinnati game. And I said, you don't understand. I don't buy up when I'm that confident of a bet. And I was on the right side of that bet. And Zach Taylor should be, should have been let go as soon as that happened, because you don't play for a 52 yard field goal when your quarterback's having a career game. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you doing? This this is, that was. Joe Burrow's not the problem there. Joe no. Burrow, that defense is horrendous, defense is and they just lost their best corner, Dax Hill, for the season yep. too. Yep. So it's just going to get worse for that defense. Bengals overs might be something to look at going forward for sure. Kind of um, like the uh, the Giants Bengals over this week. Somebody yeah. might love that in their pocket too. <laughs> yeah, Dallas. That Dallas game. I I told you when Pittsburgh is favored, you fade them. When they are underdogs, you take them. Okay. And that played out exactly how I thought it would. Right. And and you won that bet, but I still make that bet again because they should have never lost that game. No, I agree. But Mike Tomlin, there's just something about him. He can't he can't win his favorite. Yeah. When I go through that, I mean, even watching that Jets game, that look, I, I said it. We go back to our first show and you play it. I said Aaron Rodgers is not going to be what every everybody said he's going to be because if you go back, everyone sees that MVP season, but his last year in Green Bay was garbage. Then he blows his Achilles. He's a thousand years old, right? You, I didn't. Sit, but watching that is almost like that was purposeful because I thought that bet was in the bag too. But that was probably my worst one on the board there. But not not a bad day. Not a bad day. No. All right. Records for the year, 
uh i said this i said this in our text earlier mm-hmm. like we've picked the same amount of games yes and but the amount of picks that i've had more is just yeah. hilarious like, yeah you you've reeled in your double bets quite a bit yes. we, we, you had you, you had to do but again I, I have to preface it when we look at this it's 28 and 29 which i'm telling you what I, on a given day and any time i'm fine with that i'm not down too much money but if we want to go, I almost at some point want to put our scoreboard up of what we have in our pocket. Cause I, and you know, me and my numbers, I, I track it and I'm clipping at about a 57% clip, which is awesome. where I've always wanted. I've never been there at the end of the year. And, and I'm, 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 I'm trending towards that. I think I, I am 52 and 39 for the year with bets that I've actually made. So I, I've got to put that out there to the people that look at this and say, why am I listening to Mike? Trust me, when you go for those bets that are in our pocket, we're double this. We're, we're way better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. We can wipe that away. We're moving on next week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, real quick. Have you had any action on NHL too? I I have not. I am. I, I was a very big better. I, if, for people out there, if you're betting the NHL, Follow the digital gambler. He, he's out there. He was on VSIN. He You see him on Twitter. He put stuff out there. Over COVID, I got involved with him, and he would he would light me up at about 6 a.m. He would put his bets in first, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then he, as soon as he was done, he'd put them and he'd give them to me. This is a professional NHL gambler, and I would put mine in. So I was actually doing a lot. Uh, he got pretty busy, so obviously he doesn't have time for Michael, which I understand. I, I'm awful. I'm not good, Blake. I, I'm just not. Really? And it's you're too close to it. You follow fan, it too much. It's the fan in me. It's the fan yeah. in me that gets in it, and I haven't been able to find a pattern of numbers uh, from where the money is and where lines are moving. When you get out of the point spread sports and you just really are on a money line sport, yeah. it's much more difficult in my eyes. Not for everyone, but in my eyes. So I haven't yet. Will I? 100% I will. But when we're in the heart of what we're doing right now, I am 100% all football. Love it. Yeah. All right. On this, like I said earlier, this slate of college football games this weekend mm-hmm. is absolutely incredible. I am very, very excited. And the best part is, is Michigan has a bye week, so I don't have to get mad at that. I can just take in all the college football I want, watch all the games, have all three TVs, because at every single time of the day, there is a good game on. And yeah. I, the noon slate is probably the weakest out of the three, but after that, it's just like banger game, banger. It's it. I'm I'm super excited to watch college football this weekend. Yeah. I, I wish I had a, a free Saturday like I do at times. I don't have a free Saturday, but I'm telling you what, my phone is going to be plugged in because I'm going to be using the battery watching these games. There, not only are there a lot of great games, but I got money going all over the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's uh, get into this first game. Yeah. Penn State at USC. Uh, Penn State is four-point favorites. The over-under is 50 and a half. Uh, you know what? sticks out to me with this i don't know if you've seen the numbers on big 10 teams traveling west this year i don't I believe not. i don't believe they've won okay okay outright at all and i want to say the only or the only one that did was indiana i know indiana won at ucla big but besides that they're not doing very well these the the conference realignment stuff the craziness with that you know, traveling two time zones does take an effect on a college kid, especially. Absolutely, but, yeah. So, that being said, I'm still going with Penn State. I think they're the better team. I, I'm, pre- I'm still pretty high on this Penn State offense. I know that they didn't look incredible their last game out against UCLA, but they still won, and that game was never really yeah. in doubt. But uh, I'm going to roll with Penn State. This is you know a big get back spot for usc and i totally see that but i just think penn state's a better football team yeah i this is not one that i have in my account but this is one that i I got a pretty good feel for because 
Penn State is is the better team, right? You, you can look at it, you can see it. We don't like some of the things that USC is, is USC is doing. I think the public is also looking at this. They see the higher ranked Penn State team, and they think this ain't this nothing for points. What do you mean? Only four points? They're gonna kill them. So they're running. They're they're laying these points all over the place. But with USC only had again, I see that it moved. But at the time I did this, USC only had twenty seven percent of the bets. But that line had moved from from uh, four it was at four and it moved down the three and a half. It looks like they they've bought it back up the four, according to this. But as we talked about last week, I always look at that original movement, right? That first movement is usually the professional movement. So I took USC. You're going to give me four now. I'll take plus four. I'll take the home dog and I'll go against James Franklin. I, I'll do that as often as I can, especially in big games. And like I said, it is a it is a bounce back spot for USC coming off that loss at Minnesota. Like I get that a hundred percent. I just I I really like this Penn State team, which is something I did not think I would say before the season. And and this one fits a trend that I was going to bring up, uh, and I'll bring up some trends if we have time at the end of this gig here. But we've talked about it before when two ranked teams are playing, the home team is. 59% against the spread and actually 67% uh, straight up this year. They're only nine and eight against the spread. I went back and checked it, but overall over the last few years, this is hitting at about 59% against the spread. So it, it also goes a little trendy towards you for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next game. I love this game every year. I watch this game every year. Red river, Texas, Oklahoma, neutral site game at the Texas state fair. It's always yep. incredible. Uh, and this, we said I was getting away from the double bets. This is one I'm in on a double bet. I am taking, well, Mike, you start first. Okay. I am, well, I, I'm very I, excited for this game. I, I got I, excited. I'm sorry. I, I seen a lot. I seen a lot of your bets. I don't remember. So, but I have a feeling that if I double bet this one, we'd be the complete opposite because mm-hmm. I would lean towards uh, Oklahoma. I had some number. I just didn't like the way that the spread had moved and what was going on with it. So I'm looking at the over and I'm looking at the under here. I'm looking at the total. Usually you've got this big game. The public's going to be watching it. It's on national TV. You know that they, they juice this up. The Always they know the public's going to take overs. Actually, only 18% of the bets are on the under here. However... The bucks, the books have lowered this number. It opened up at 51. It dropped down to 51 and a half. These are these questions I always have, Blake. If 82% of the bets are on the over and they know people are going to take the over, why do they make it easier by lowering that number? It's because again, the smart money's on the under. I'm going under 50 and a half. So and I'm looking up this stat to just confirm my thoughts. Mm-hmm. I love I I love this Texas team. I think they're their best team in the country. They're the number one ranked team in the country. Yes. So I'm gonna roll with Texas. I'm also on the over. Yeah. And w- everything you're saying, I understand. I get it. <laughs> this game is always wacky. This yes. game, oh, there's always points scored in this game. I bet the under one time in this game. Okay. It went over in the first quarter. I, I wouldn't doubt it. When you play a game like this, the emotion in this game can't be measured. I yeah. mean, there might be fights in the crowd from Brian Bosworth and, and let's I, let's go back. Who? Billy Sims. Was he a Texas running back? Like It goes back that far to where old guys will fight over this game. This is a huge rivalry. When you get that going, these are kids. We forget about it. Points can definitely happen. Good defenses turn into bad defenses. Yeah. Right. No, it's just – this game's always just wacky. Yeah. Weird stuff happens. I mean, we've seen Oklahoma pull big upsets in this game in similar spots. Same thing with Texas when Oklahoma was good a few years ago. Yeah. But it, it's, that's I, what happens. I just, if the number one thing I have faith in, which goes against all of your numbers, is the over in this game. It's always just points. And I don't know how it happens, but it happens every year. Oh, absolutely. So I, when I look, I'm looking at my sheet right here, and I wrote right at the top in all caps, I do not like any of my picks. Like, they, they're, they're, 
so I, I I say that a lot. No, you did say gross as you sent them yeah. too. And when I when I look at it, when I look at them, I don't bet games for a reason. I'm not afraid. As you, I'll, I'll fire on any game that hits my system, mm-hmm. and when it doesn't hit, there's there's a reason. So that's why, like, I look at that and I'm like, there's no way. Not only is there no way, there's not enough money in this. But the, the line looks a little fishy there when it drops down. So I will yeah. put yeah. it out there as a hey, just take a look at it. Don't be surprised if it happens. Well, like we, and like we saw, your college picks have been very good this year it's so true. something something's in the air i don't know what it is <laughs> uh next game yeah. rivalry game i know florida hasn't been great this year yep. but tennessee coming off that loss to arkansas at arkansas that was gross nico's heisman odds are probably non-existent anymore after that game right. yep. um but this is a great rivalry. Uh, I know I know my good friend Lomas Brown will be tuned into this game. Yep. He hates Tennessee with all of his heart. Uh, so I will start with this one. Yep. This one, I, I really was tempted to do the double bet on this one, but I'm <laughs> just going to go with the one, and I'm going to still ride with Tennessee. This yep. if, if they let me down this week, then I'm probably done. But. I'm going to keep riding with Tennessee minus the 15 and a half, which is such a weird number too. That's very but, weird, but I'll take it 15 and a half Tennessee. All right. Like th- those are your boys. I get, I went to the total. I was looking at it. And, and when I always do this, I always start as you know, as what's the public eye looking at. And I think the public eyes looking at this game and they see Tennessee, Tennessee might score 55 points on their, on their own. Mm-hmm. And because of what you said, Florida has been struggling. This is a team that is bordering on quitting on the coach and just not doing well. This could get ugly. However, only 25% of the bets, this is just like the text game, 25% of the bets are on the under. Like, so what does that mean? It means a lot when that line doesn't move. It opened at 55 and a half last week. It stays at 55 and a half. That means the books, even though they're 75% of the bets crushing the over, they love their number. They're inviting you to take that over. When stuff like that happens, I'm on under 55 and a half all day. I don't hate it, especially because Tennessee's offense is starting to look like a freshman quarterback is running it. Like it, it, it looks like that. And Florida, for all the issues that they've had this year, they did beat UCF last week and kind of rolled against them. So, yes. and their defense has been playing better. I still think their offense is like just horrendously bad. They're still rolling yeah. two QBs right now, but I don't, I don't hate that under, and especially because Tennessee's defense, for all the struggles that their offense is having, their defense yeah. is still really, really good. Yeah, and we mentioned it, I don't know if it was a week or two ago, when Tennessee played Oklahoma, the cracks started the show. He's a true freshman. It's bound to happen. Mm-hmm. He's playing. He's not just playing college football. He's playing SEC football. It gets bound to happen, Those cra- and it kind of goes downhill, and it crashes yeah. on the kid. I hope he picks it up. I hope he has a great game. I hope he throws eight touchdowns because he's fun to watch. But he's 18. It's it's getting yep. tougher and tougher as the year goes along. 100%. Uh, another game in the SEC. The SEC slate is the one that, that's awesome mm-hmm. this weekend. Obviously, we got three SEC games right here. But Ole Miss at LSU. Ole Miss is favored by three on the road. The over-under is 61 and a half. Mike, I'll let you kick this one off. All right, so th- this one actually might find its way into my pocket. It's not there, but this is actually a pretty heavy lean. Um, when I look at when I look through the public glasses, I'm looking at everyone saying Ole Miss and LSU offense, offense, offense. These are two of the most electric offenses in, in the country, and both teams can struggle at defense. This game must go over. Well, if it must go over, why has that line dropped from 64 to 61 and a half? especially when there's only 42% of the bets on the under. It's because there's 51% of the dollars there. The big boy dollars are coming in on the under. I love it. I'm going under 61 and a half. And this is a a double bet for Blake. (laughs) I am on Ole Miss plus the three, and I am on the over. Wait, Uh, Ole Miss minus the three, right? 
or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. LSU plus the three at okay. home. I'm yeah, sorry. Exactly. My brain, my brain lagged for a second. I got there. you. I got you. LSU plus the three. Um, I don't believe in either of these defenses, to be nope. frank. I think LSU's corners are absolutely horrible, and Ole Miss has, has shown some struggles defensively as well. I haven't, in all honesty, I haven't watched as much Ole Miss as I have LSU this year. Um, but it's at night at Death Valley, and you're giving me three full points yep. with LSU. I like it. I like this game, it. This game, this game was nuts last year too. I, I don't know if you remember it, but it was like an absolute shootout back and forth. Yep. And Ole Miss won right at the end of the game. And Lane was doing Lane Lane Kiffin Lane things. Kiffin. It was crazy. Yep. Yep. Um and it but it was also the game that like kind of catapulted uh Daniels into the Heisman race too. So yep. I go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. I would say this is another one that fits that trend that we talked about with the USC game with the home <laughs> team hitting at about 59%. So you're taking not only you you taking the team that against the spread, but you are getting the point. So I yeah. like it. I, I'm not mad at that. This was a game I was looking at that way, but I really do love this under and the way it's moved. I might sit on this one, let it marinate, and let the public buy me back up a couple of points before I slam on this under on Saturday. And I could I could definitely see that happening. Yeah. Oh, God, I got yeah. I got burned by by the way I just this just popped in my head. I got burned last week. We talked about that Clemson Florida State game. Yep. I didn't bet it until Saturday and that line moved up a, a full oh, yeah. point. It was at like 15 and a half, it moved to 16 and a half and I lost Boom. Yep. because of that. Yep. So it goes right back to what you were saying. We always like, talk about closing line value. Mm-hmm. And you, when you when you miss that line, you you got to really waver and and say, oh boy. Yep. And that's a weird, you know, that sixteen and a half to fifteen. And that's that like no man's land between fourteen and seventeen. And that's I, why I still rolled with it, and then it, it, it lost it for me. Absolutely, it's that those those big those getting that the best line always matters. Yes. Uh and the game of the week might be one of the best games of the year. Mm-hmm. Ohio State going to Oregon. Ohio State is favored by three and a half, over under a 53 and a half. I, I'm i just going to preface this right off the bat. I probably will not be having a bet, like, actually on this game. This is one of the few, probably this and the Penn State-USC game, I probably won't touch. The other ones I will. Um, but... For my pick for the show, I have to take Oregon as a Michigan fan. Yep. And I said I I think Oregon is going to be playing for a national title this year. So yes, I'm going to roll with Oregon. Yeah, I, I can't argue that. If I were to lean on a side and look at a side, it would be with the home dog. I, I would really like that. I think it's almost like. It's not a. It wasn't a look ahead game last week. I think it's been a look ahead year almost to Oregon. Like, what on our schedule do we have to be the most prepared for? And it's this game right here. So I. That's where I would be leaning. I like that. I like Oregon. But here we go with this one. This one is why I do not like. At this oh, delay is killing me. <laughs> that place has got to be going crazy. Let's go, Tigers. I love it. Eat them up, Tigers. So back to what I was saying. This one is off the board. This is a total non-mic thought bet, and I said this uh, the first show we had. If you ever hear me talk football, fade me. Go go right against me. And I have no numbers on this one. Not only do I not have any numbers, this line has moved from 51 and a half. I'm looking at the total, by the way, 51 and a half to 53. So the line's moving like the smart money's coming in on the over. So where am I going? I'm going on the under. And why am I going on the under? I'm going on an Oregon team that wants to win this game. They're going to control that ball to control the game. And Ohio State has a nasty, nasty, nasty defense. And you have to keep Ohio State's offense off the field. That's a wicked offense. Their receivers, their running backs, everyone's clicking an unbelievable offensive line. Oregon's got to control that ball. So if it goes the way me and you are thinking, and like in Oregon, this game's got to go under. So I'm going under. Yeah, I just I need to see Oregon's run offense click. Yes, I get what you're saying, hundred percent. 
All right. And just real quick, I will roll through these uh, other college football bets I have. I just have a couple this week because that main slate is so good and so intriguing. I'm getting – Todd, are you hearing that echo or is that just me? I just want to make sure. I, I think I'm hearing myself back from – yeah, I'm hearing yeah, myself yeah. back from Mike. Mike, turn your volume on your computer down just a little bit if you can. On my computer? Yeah, because I'm my hearing myself back. Off. It's on the... Now I don't hear anything. Did I just mute it? Yeah, I think, yeah, so. I think so. How's that? Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's better. All right. Cause I, yeah, because gotta, I've got to be able to hear you, though. Yeah, no, definitely. I was just... I was. It was, like, really bad. I got echo. you. Uh, so, first game... UMass, they're hosting Missouri after that letdown spot last week. UMass first quarter plus seven. Just take them in the first quarter. Yeah, one hundred percent. We've talked that, about that. No. Yeah, we've talked about that coach. That coach is going to come out. I wouldn't doubt if that's twenty-one nothing at the end of one. Uh Washington at Iowa. Over under is 42 and a half. I like the under there. Uh, Washington's offense did look good against Michigan last week, but still that Iowa defense is kind of stingy. We saw that in the Ohio State game. I'll take the under there. Clemson minus 20 and a half against Wake Forest. They're at Wake Forest. That's the only part that scares me is Cade Klubnik is a different QB on the road than he is at home. But I this Wake Forest team is horrible. So I will take Clemson minus the 20 and a half. Illinois minus 23 against Purdue. I will bet against Purdue every single week. It does not matter who they're playing. Mm -hmm. They are the worst team in the power four. And I think Illinois is a really good football team. I'm very worried about when Michigan plays them. Uh, Pitt minus three and a half against Cal. Cal traveling all the way back to the East Coast. Their, Their travel schedule is crazy. After that letdown that they had against Miami, and then they have to go all the way to Pittsburgh. Uh, give me Pitt minus three and a half. West Virginia plus three against Iowa State. That is just straight up Big Twelve madness. Yep. That's why I like that game. Yep. The, I th- legitimately the Big Twelve winner could be have seven wins, six wins in the conference. That yep. conference is crazy, and I I'm getting a full full three points. Absolutely, so I, I was tracking that. that. I was tracking that game too. I just couldn't. Ma- I just couldn't make it work. But I, I love that bet. I love that bet. I could actually see me on it. I like it that much. If I can, if I can see where the I can see are. Iowa State like that spread opening up a little bit Friday yeah. Saturday too. Yeah. Uh K State minus three and a half at Colorado. Kansas State's a better football team than Colorado. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, Colorado's depth is going to catch up with them. I I know that they're coming off of a bye, so they should be in theory healthy. But I mean, also Travis Hunter could just do Travis Hunter things. But I like K right. State. I think that right. they're a much better team, especially. I know they had the weird game against BYU, but and then Boise, we ride Boise no yeah. matter what the spread is minus twenty one. It doesn't matter. They're trying to get Genty Heisman. So how about we we talk about bad beats and I've got one of the greatest bad beats ever uh, uh, coming up when we get done with all this. But how about that bad beat on Genty's uh, yards, 186 yards in the first half with an over under of 191. He doesn't play in the second half. (laughs) I so I I just instead of so this is I'll do the same thing this week. I did it last week. I take them minus the spread and I also take I parlay it with Genty to score two touchdowns. Oh, so that I get in, I get into plus money. He's gonna score two touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. So, 186 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. Yep. Is that any good? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's good at football. It's crazy. Yeah, he's good. He's good at football. All right. Yeah, I love it. I think this is what the sixth straight week that I don't think we have any of our in pocket games going against each other. So I do like that. That's so good. I'm I'm gonna start with the the Rutgers Wisconsin game. I think the public's taking a look at this. They put their glasses on. They see last week Wisconsin with an easy 52-6 to win in cover of their 12.5 points. Rutgers failing to cover and losing to Nebraska, right? However, this line moved. This this line moved from two up to two and a half. Why why is that? Because Rutgers only has 49% of the best, but they've got 85% of the money. 
I'm going with that line move. I got Rutgers at minus two and a half. Well, I really ha- I'm liking that one at home. I'm going for another home team. I'm going with the Nevada Oregon State game. The public looking at this with their glasses on, they look see Oregon State a better record. They won last week. Nevada losing to San Jose State. Come on now. Nevada's only got 27% of the bets, but Blake, 81% of the money. This line moved from eight and a half. I seen it today at three and a half. I got them getting four and a half. So I, I hopefully I'm beating that line. I like it. I don't like giving up four points, you know, like yeah. losing that much, but this was one I couldn't I couldn't pass up. We talked about the Kentucky. I took Kentucky minus 13. You know what the public sees. Vandy just beat Alabama. They're gonna kill, they're gonna probably go in and they're gonna beat Kentucky. Kentucky's had some problems this year. We talked about that, right? Kentucky only has 27% of the bets and really only 43% of the money. But this line's moved from 10 and a half to 13. Vandy is the trendy dog. Everybody's on Vandy yeah. because they just beat Alabama. A big thing out there for betters that are listening, you have to avoid recency bias. You you can't mm-hmm. look at last week and say, oh, Vandy's now going to be an easy cover. You're going to give me – I've seen it as high as 14 and a half. I've got yeah. it at 13. You're giving me 14 and a half points. I'll take that all day. That's an easy cover. Uh, my next game, this one is I, – I wrote right above it, stinky. This is gross. I don't know why I bet this one, but we do know why I bet it because it, it makes sense. Uh, the I'm going to Akron in Western Michigan. Public puts their glasses on. They see Western Michigan's got the better record. They're coming off a win against Ball State. Akron has one of the, not only one of, probably the worst offense and defense in the world, not even the country in the world. They're really bad at football. Oh, it's bad. However, Akron's getting only 35% of the bets. This line's moved from 12.5 to 9.5 in their favor. Why? Because they got 73% of the money. That's a Mike bet, right? I saw it. Blake. I saw it like this on Monday. I waited today to actually take this bet. I, it's that bad. I'm like, I can't, I can't move the other way, move the other way. It didn't move. I took it. Uh, one I just actually took about a half hour ago before we, we went on. It's another stinky one. That's why I waited so long. In the Buffalo Toledo game, the, the public put their glasses on. They say this is going to be an easy cover. Toledo beat Miami for how and cover. Buffalo got absolutely smoked by UConn. I like that because I had UConn in that game. And despite only 34% of the bets, this line dropped off that 10 to 9.5. I took it. I got Buffalo plus 9.5 at home against Toledo. I don't hate it. Oh, and I can't argue, too. I got to put this in there. I don't know if you've been betting as these games are going on in the week. I took FIU uh, plus 17.5 earlier in the week. That was a nice one. The only one I had the under last night in that okay. Jackson, and that that wasn't that didn't work out well for it didn't Blake. work out for you. Yeah, that it looked good at half, and then all of a sudden I look up and it was what 56 or whatever they Jack scored. State puts in their backup quarterback, he runs for like 75 yards and a touchdown. Like, first play, he's in the game. So, I was I was driving home from Sean's and I was listening to the betting podcast, and, and they were talking about this is it's trending towards. Jacksonville State covering, uh, but it going under all, all this. I get home, I look at the score. I'm like, what the heck? Did they score three touchdowns in the final two minutes of the half? Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. I was pissed. I was very upset. <laughs> it was, I'm like, oh my God. It was it was brutal. All right, on to the NFL. We'll roll through these quick because like I said, the NFL slates, it's good, but it's not it's not as good as that college slate. Not as week. exciting. Uh, first game is Commanders Ravens, and Baltimore is favored by six and a half. The over under is 51 and a half. Uh, this is one I probably will not play, uh, but I'll take the over 51 and a half, two high powered offenses. And that, yep. That's my reasoning. Yeah, th- this gets into what I was talking about with Vandy. I- I'm taking uh, the Ravens minus six and a half. It's not in my account, but will probably be in my account. Uh, you know, I like the early move. That early move went from six to six and a half. I'm going to wait for it to get down to six. But, you know, the public's got their glasses on. They see Jaden Daniels, and it's all rainbows and meatballs. They're, they're going to bet anything Jaden Daniels. I bet you his over and everything is probably inflated in this game. Everything's inflated. I see the Ravens actually just pounding Derrick Henry and and just taking over in this game. 
they only have 24% of the bets, 44% of the money. But again, that line moved towards them. At some point, I will have this in my pocket. Ravens minus six and a half. Next game, Cardinals at Packers. Green Bay is favored by five and a half at home, over under a 47 and a half. Mike, you go first on this one. Blake, this is easy because I know we're ripping through this right now. And I'm going with the total here. And I'm going under 47 and a half. There's only 35% of the bets in this game is on the under, but it has moved not one point, not two point. This sucker has moved three points. And why? 15 mile an hour wins, baby. We got a wonder. And this is in my it. pocket also under whatever number you want to give me. This game's going under. I, I, I'm going to play that. You say wonder, I'm in. Let's yep. go. I even looked uh, up on the weather app. Arizona plus the five and a half. Arizona's just been covering spreads or winning outright. Mm -hmm. The only game they didn't was that Lions game. And then the Washington, well, the Washington game, but I feel like, uh, you know, there's that whole thing out there now that every, the team after they play the Lions just gets shit canned. That's everyone's yep. theory, whatever. Yep. I don't fully buy into that. I know it's an actual thing, but it's just, uh, it's just happenstance. I think, I don't think it's the Lions fault, yep. but, uh, they've been covering green Bay. Didn't look great against the Rams by any means. That was a, yeah, the Rams should have covered that game in my opinion, especially with that pick six that loved through. Oh, so give awesome. me Arizona plus the five and a half. And to, to double back onto you. And I like that all my numbers tell me I should be taking green Bay in this game. Uh, the smart money's there. Uh, the line has, has kind of creeped there from five to five and a half. However, I opened an account this week because I, I go downtown and I gamble at uh, Greek Town and I get comps. And to keep my comps during the school year, I can't get there as much. I bet on the ESPN app because it's a pen play. Yeah, they've got it. They've got this all the way down to four and a half. So it's it's moving your way, Blake. I, I like that bet. I think Arizona at five and a half is a great bet. Yeah. Uh, Lions Cowboys. Probably the get, the best game of the week in the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, I told you a couple weeks ago, I'm done being a Lions hater. I got to yep. just, yep. just ride it out. I got to stop betting against them. And so I'm going to take the Lions minus the three. All right. I can't hear that. I'm looking at the total. And when the, the public puts their glasses on, and let's say the public did some research on this one, what they're going to see is – these guys have been playing to the under. The, the Dallas has played the two straight unders. I think the Lions are three and one to the under. Uh, it's kind of a public, like a little bit, like 44% of the bets are here on the under, 52% of the money. I mean, I, I got to take that back. They're playing to the under. I'm looking at the over. 44% of the bets, 52% of this money, and this line has actually gone and opened at 52 and moved to 52 and a half. I'm jumping on over 52 and a half in this game. I yep. think, uh, and like I said, I'm on. I'm on Detroit minus three. Yeah, I, I think Dak Prescott is is on a prove uh, my contract tour, and he's going to do everything he can to try to score as many points as he can. And I, I think that both offenses can do well, and defenses are a little bit shaky. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I don't have it in my pocket. It's a little stinky, but we're going over. I'm just waiting for you to react to what just happened. So I'll just I'll give it about 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. All right. But no. here, this is what I said to, to Todd when we were watching it. Like, obviously, if you paid a lot of money to be at this game, go ahead and be worried. But anybody else, don't be worried. The way the season's going, this is the way it's supposed to happen. Yeah, I just right? don't want to go. You don't want to go back. I'm telling to you, they're walking off while we're on this show. Okay. All right. Uh, and then next game is the Bengals and the Giants. Yes. Cincinnati is favored by three and a half at New York over under of 48 and a half. Mike, yep. you go ahead first. All right. Th this is one of these rare games that, that I take a look at and we'll call it pros and the Joes, you know, the professional gamblers and, and the public are kind of seeing the same thing. 54% of the bets are on the over. 64% of the bets uh, money is on the over. I look at, I see the Bengals. Burrow is clicking. He is he is back to being Joe Burr. I love it. And they have a horrible defense. We just talked about that. Their defense is their problem. 
Burrow's going to throw seven touchdowns, but guess what? The defense is going to give up 60 points. I'm going over 48 and a half, even with uh, – why can't – I'm blanking on the Giants quarterback's name because he's awful. Daniel Jones. Thank you, Daniel Jones. He's awful. He, but played he good didn't last. look bad last week. He didn't look bad last week, and the Cincinnati, and Cincinnati's defense is going to make him look good. This game's going way over. And that was without neighbors. Yes, you should I be believe. back this week. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I do. I have that one in my pocket. Love it. Uh, I'm just I'm going to take my boy, Joe Burrow, yep. minus three and a half. Eventually, this will start working out for me. <laughs> uh, and I will, I'll end up betting this because it's Sunday night. And, yeah. You know, why not? But I also, I like that over. I'm usually a primetime unders guy, but I like that over too. I, both these defenses are just not good. The, yeah. the only defensive player that's worth a damn on either of these rosters is Thibodeau. That is it. Um, last game, Monday Night Football, Buffalo at New York Jets. Everything that's happening in New York with them firing Salah, everything yep. is just – it's a mess there. With all that mess happening, I'm just going to take Josh Allen minus the two and a half. Yep. Pretty you simple. can't argue. Jo- Josh Allen's good. Josh Allen, prime jo- prime time Josh Allen's good too. Can't take it. I texted you about my bet because not only is it a show bet, I've got it in my pocket. I'm looking at under 41 and a half on this one. And I thought I was on cruise control because they didn't get rid of Hackett. And what did they do today? They took Hackett off the play calling. So I'm actually kind of scared. I could see it going one or two ways. I mean, obviously things go one of two ways. But I can see it pissing Aaron Rodgers off enough that he goes off and has one of these Aaron Rodgers games that that he hasn't had hasn't had. But you know, the public's looking at the, when I made the bet. I'm thinking the public sees the number three ranked Bills offense and think A Rod's going to bounce back with a new coach. Only 45 percent of the bets are on the under, but 69 percent of the money's on that under. I'm all over 41 and a half. That line has. I don't believe that line's moved according to what I have, but we'll see. All right. And but you've got uh, it at 40 and a half. So it has dropped down. Yeah, it has moved a little bit. I like I that even better because I've got it at 41 and a half. Beautiful. Uh, you want to go through your other NFL picks real quick? Yeah, real quick. So I, I, I'm sitting on a couple, so I, I don't have that many. Uh, we talked about uh, the Cardinals and the Packers, right? Yep. Under 47 and a half. We talked about the Jets and Bills under 41 and a half. The Bengals over 48 and a half. A lot of totals this week. And I couldn't figure out why. I've never been on this many totals. But when I was driving home today, I was re listening to a, a, a podcast and they were talking about, I think it's the most home dogs in like 20 or 30 years that, that, really? that the NFL has seen. Um, again, it was an old podcast. So I could totally be off. I thought I heard that. And I'm like, that makes sense to why. There's movement, and because no one knows what to do, you have nine home dogs. Like, what are you doing? Um, the next one I'm looking at is uh, the Texans and the Patriots. A couple of these fell into my lap here because I took this one on Monday just because I like the numbers. Um, it, you're looking at the public sees two teams that have gone over six of eight times, right? So, 38, this is going to blow over with only 42% of the bets and 94% of the money on the under. This line moved from 39 and a half to 38. I got it at 38. I want to say it's dipped just a little bit, but then they put Drake May right in my lap. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. I love that under even more right now. Yeah, it's at 37 and a half. At yeah. most so now. the next one I'm going to go to is the Raiders Steelers. Again, I'm on another total. Uh, the public's looking at the, the Raiders are over almost all this year. The Steelers, two out of four times. This low total, 37, it's got to go over, right? Well, 40% of the bets, 83% of the money are on the under. And this line has moved from 37 and a half to 37, where I grabbed it. It's as low as 36 and a half today. So I'm yep. liking that movement. The Saints wait, and the oh, wait. Are you on the over or the under there? The under. I'm on the under. Okay. So I have that. I have that as well. The, like the Saints and the lot. Bucks. The Saints and the Bucks total. This was one I waited for this line to come out early Monday after, or was it Monday or Tuesday? When Derek Carr got hurt, whatever they played yeah. Sunday night, right? So I was waiting to see uh, what that line was going to come out at. That line came out at forty-two and a half. Before I seen anything, I jumped on uh, under forty-two and a half. 
Uh, the public's are look, public's looking at that. The Bucks can click offensively. The Saints, right now, they're they're inconsistent, but when they're on, they're one of the high flying yeah. offenses that are out there. Thinking forty two and a half is going to be an easy cover. This is one you got to watch. Only sixteen percent of the bets and only twenty two percent of the money. Very contrarian. Very against the public. The public's all over this, but the line has dropped from forty two and a half to forty one and a half. It might be because David Carr is not going to play. And it might be because we're going to see another one of these rookie quarterbacks and Spencer Rattler playing. Yeah, no, they had, they announced yesterday Rattler starting. So he's starting. And yes. when we started this year off, there, there's a trend uh, that's going right now. But you remember we talked about at the beginning of the year how bad the rookie quarterbacks were. They weren't throwing uh, touchdowns. They didn't look good. Do you know they're off to the best start in like 10 to 15 years or 12 and three against the spread? However, Spencer Rattler's first game isn't going to be that way. Drake Mays first. So those two kind of fell in my lap when I've got it, but I'm on the under in that game. And I just took a couple minutes ago, the Chargers minus two against the Broncos. Uh, the, the public sees the Broncos smoke the Raiders. You know, they're thinking at home, they're getting points. Thank you very much. However, 40% of the bets, 50% of the money are on the Chargers, and that line has moved. I think it's all the way up to three. It's dipped a little bit to, to two and a half. I found it at a two with a little bit of juice there. A little bit. You yeah. got to search around. I, I did some search and I wanted to get rid of that, that, that half there. So I got it at two, which was where it opened up at. But it opened at two, moved to three. I'm on the Chargers on that one. And I will. Odds are I'll be on the Ravens by the end of Sunday. So okay, but I just haven't I just haven't taken it yet, and I got to be honest. Um, so I just have three here, um, one of which you already talked about. Uh, I like the Bears minus one and a half against the Jags. I just yeah, uh, I just don't think the Jags are good, and the Bears Bears at home are very good apparently. Now wait, I this think game's in London, like, right? Oh yeah, you're right. I gotta stop. I have to pay attention okay. to that. Technically, <laughs> they're the home team, though. Yes, 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 yes. And another thing, oh, yeah, because the Jags have two London two. games. Yes, two. It's and back they, they back think three. Peterson's not coming home on that team playing. Oh yeah, probably not. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm still gonna take. It. I think I saw a stat earlier too. Now that you say that, though, this is good. This works for stats for Blake. Uh, the favorites in London are like it hit at like a sixty percent clip. Yes, they're the fav the faves over there are real good. We talked about that last week, and we also yep. talked last week about if you're trailing it going into the fourth quarter, Blake, into the witching hour. Don't worry about it because the Jaguars are absolutely horrid in the fourth yep. quarter. They've scored three third thir fourth quarter points, I think, all year. Well, I think that might have changed last week. But before that game, we talked that up to that point, they'd only scored three points. These London games fuck me up every year. Uh, but I love it. I love I, drinking I, my coffee and, and eating my cereal and watching. You're it. up at that time. I, uh, I'm I'm at ten o'clock is like my my wake up time. Oh, trust so me. I, I look to text you, and you always have your uh, silence notifications on. I know you're sleeping. Uh, so I when I had originally written this up, I had sank Saints Bucks over, but then now that Rattler is starting, I would not touch that. I would agree with you on the under, but that's probably just going to be a no play for me. Uh, Steelers Raiders under 36 and a half. I'm with you on that one. And then you talked about that Chargers Broncos game. I'm on the under. I think the what Broncos defense is really good. 35 and a half. Yeah. So I'm waiting. To, I'm mean, that's one. I'm like, what will, will the public come in and say 35 and a half in an NFL game? Like really Bo Nix sucks. Bo Nix stinks. But the Chargers just want to run the ball. They just want to get in and get out. Yes. Like Jim Harbaugh wants to. Harbaugh's going to run it, run it. He's going to do that until, and it could be all year, because Herbert might not be healthy all year. He's probably the healthiest he's been all year coming off the bye. But that's when I love that bet. I'm just waiting to see if it ticks up a little bit. And if the numbers work out, it's one I could be on too. That's it for me. I'm good. We're we're love it. we're flying this is usually yeah. an hour and a half show we're we're at 54 minutes we're doing a good job todd can we get a good job thumbs up yeah good i love job. it i love it i uh, love it we got a couple minutes is there any trends you want to go over real quick well i tried to knowing the spot that we're in i tried to throw them in there right as as we were going uh through this uh the, the one i just mentioned rookie i was gonna say can i interest you in any of these 
Uh, the rookie quarterbacks are 12 and three against the spread. Uh, you got Daniels plus six and a half, Rattler plus three, May plus seven. Your boy Caleb Williams minus two, you're on. And then mm-hmm. Bo Nix plus two and a half. Take the Caleb Williams bet out of that. Is there any other one that you would take? Honestly, if I was thinking who's been the most consistent, it would be Daniels. Yeah. It would probably be Washington. So, yeah. but I feel like the Ravens have gotten a lot figured out. And I don't know if he's played a defense that level yet yeah. that's the part that scares me but if i if i if it was like gun to my head i had to pick one it would probably be that one yeah it's going to be interesting baltimore henry's resurgence they're going to control that one another one for for everyone out there this is all always for the people out there um dogs of plus five and a half this year are 17 four and one that's incredible really? that's incredible but blake dogs of seven and a half or more are eight and one against the spread, but shut the front door seven and two straight up. So take the Browns money line. <laughs> that's that's it. The Browns are the only one that meet that that meet that one. I thought that one was kind of crazy. I wouldn't but, bet the Browns with your money, Mike. I'm just being honest. No, God, no. That how? Unless Deshaun what? Watson gets in or gets out, and they gets put out. in Famous, then I'm in. But they're not doing. Yeah. Stefanski has been staunch on no. He's our quarterback. He's the the dysfunction in that organization is going to take them back it's years a shame, and years. He's a good. Years. He's a good coach. He yeah, really it, is a good coach. It, quick story. Uh, probably, woof. I'm going to say 15 years ago. Me and my wife were in Vegas, and, and we were getting into one, and we're playing video poker, and we ran into this couple. Long story short, they were from Cleveland. And we made a pact. If the Lions and the the Browns are ever in the Super Bowl, we'll meet at these video poker machines, blah, blah, blah. I wish I actually kept their numbers to to tell them how sorry I am. I thought this was good. I'm really happy this wasn't a swinging story, Mo. I appreciate that. This was going down on bad bets. No, it it was going down on bets. Like, when you think about we're sitting there just commiserating at that time. 15 years ago, the Browns and the Lions, like it, we, we were drowning our sorrows, right? Because it was NFC. I always used to go out for the AFC NFC championship games. Yeah. We would never be there. Seriously, so, though, if you told me five years ago when the Browns were looking like they were going to be a pretty good team, like who would be closer to a Super Bowl in five years? Yeah. The Lions or the Browns? It's crazy. And, and you look at – some of the coaching malpractice that is that is going on. If you look at what Zach Taylor did in in that Cincinnati game, uh, what McDermott did in the Buffalo game, that cost us a lot of us good hard earned money that we worked really hard for to lose like that. And then you look at Stefanski. He's won what coach of the year twice. He's a really good. He's coach. a really good coach, and that guy has to go in front That's of people. Ownership. And say Watson's my quarterback. You know it's not him. You know it's not yeah. him. That is such a that's the crap that sets you back decades. The Brown the Browns are done. They're buried. I just buried the Browns. It, it's it's over with. One last thing before we go, before I stop rambling here with the uh the, the bad the beats. The, the bad beats. Did you did you check out the bad beats this week? I watched it and I think I was on well the Oregon game was on there. So yeah. that was that was one of them and I think I was on another one of them too. How about that Yukon Temple game? Oh, I I know. That was ins- I wasn't on that. I'm in my office watching and and I honestly couldn't understand how that was playing and what was going on because they're going to go down and score. And why is this exciting? This is the so you get for the people out there that, that didn't watch this. The over under was 48 and a half. UConn scores to go up 23 20, 346 left in the game. You just need a defensive stop and you're good. But no, that can't happen, right? Temple's got to matriculate down the field. Not only do they get down the field, but they get to the 10 yard line, the nine yard line with a minute 50 left to go. First down five yards second down three yards third down and goal from the one yard line they stuff them you're going crazy you've got that under we've got this here's our 
fourth down. They were you at like the one your, You go bonkers because they stop them. They ran the same stupid play. They stopped them. You're jumping up and down and celebrating. Then you look out of the corner of your eye. That running back fumbled the ball with no time left, and the defense goes down, scores a touchdown. You lose your under by a half point. I got sick in my office, and I didn't even have money on that. Watching it three days later. It was so gross. That's a gross, hilarious. gross one. Just as gross as the one I sent you the other night. 58 points scored in three quarters and an over-under of 58 and a half and nothing, nothing after that. That's gross. It's the worst, but that's why we love it. Mm-hmm. That's why we come back the next week because we, we're going to double it next time, right? Hey, if I keep hitting these parlays. <laughs> you, you've got money to double, baby. you got money to double. <laughs> Let's go. What are the what, What's the live odds on, odds on the Tigers to win this now? I do have I so I didn't make a parlay. I just took Tigers money line tonight, so I'm sweating right now. I should have parlayed. I, I should have done something. You see, I feel like I would jinx it if I bet live before the ninth inning starts. So yeah. I'm not going to do it. But if you're out there, I'm well, telling you, the Mike Feel has a walk off win for the Tigers. Well, I and I know we're we're talking about this, and it's already happened. The, the fact that they put Job in is like in this spot is is crazy, yeah. but also awesome. Yes. So, oh, it, it, th- th- this is what Hinch, it's been. I, I have faith in Hinch. He's going to figure it out. So, if you have faith in Campbell every time he passes up points to go for it on fourth down, I don't, but does something some crazy. Do. <laughs> you got to love this. They're, they're, they're hand in hand with each other, right? Yeah. All right, well, let's right. get out of here and let's watch the ninth inning. And, uh, you know, obviously good luck to everyone on their bets this weekend. Enjoy the college slate. Enjoy the NFL slate. We only have so many Saturdays and Sundays in the fall, you know. Yeah. So take advantage of them. Enjoy these games. Good luck on your bets. Mike, you're probably going to crush as you've been all year. And I'm just going to try and do my best. I, I think, think this is going to be a good week for me. I like it. I like it. I know I'll be talking to you soon, buddy. It's good to see you. Good seeing you too, man. Have a good night, everyone. You've been listening to Off the Board. Tune in all throughout the football season for weekly picks and insights. Subscribe to Unsyndicated and Off the Board on all your favorite social media and podcast platforms.